Hello YouTube. So I recently received a few messages from a couple people about beginning fife tips and strategies and, and suggestions and uh, really focusing mostly on just getting a good sound and developing embouchure. So I thought, well, rather than replying with a bunch of text and some book suggestions um, and just letting them go on their merry way, I thought I would reply with a video, in which case I can actually showcase what I do and I can um, kind of work a little bit more along, you know, alongside you, not just them, but also all of you who are watching this right now. So I'm going to introduce a technique. Well, first I'm going to show you what a good embouchure I think should look like. Um, I'll actually play the fife a little so you can actually see that it is legit. I'll stop. I'll pull the fife away without moving my lips and you can see the shape of the mouth. And then from there, I'm going to show you a technique in getting a good sound um, that's free. It doesn't cost you anything. This is the best, right? So it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to order it. You can do it right now as you're watching the video. And hopefully within an hour or less or even by the end of the day, however long it takes, a couple days, um, you'll be getting a good sound. Um, the technique that I'm going to use just in just a little bit has never failed me. And um, I've used this for a lot of a lot of students um, at camps, at workshops, at the field music school. The name of the shirt I'm wearing right here. Um, actually, a great example before I go on is the eighteen the War of eighteen twelve Junior Fife and Drum Camp down at Fort McHenry in Baltimore. I taught there a few years ago, where I had six beginners who had never played it in their life, um, and so I had to really think quick, you know, and so. I used this technique, and I kid you not, all six players were playing fife by the end of the day. Within an hour, within less than an hour, they were playing fife. And they were already on to the first few notes of the scale. And by the end of that first day that I was working with them, they were all playing something. Um, and the beginning of a tune. I don't remember which tune, but it was a pretty simple tune. But in just one day. And so when people come up to me and say, oh, I've been trying this for days and days, weeks, I've been trying this for months, and all I get is, I say, I can fix that. And every single time, it's worked. I kid you not, every single time it's worked. So I want to show you that technique, I'm going to show you what I do, and so that you can work on it yourself, and also if you are a teacher yourself, or with, um, with a core, or, or a private teacher, um, and you've got students who are having this trouble, maybe this will help you as well. Um, but it's a great way of getting fifers on their feet as quickly as possible. Um, so without further ado, let me show you what a good embouchure looks like. So a couple tips first. You want to you want to pull the, your lips back. It's kind of like a smile. But it's not just a smile. If I just played with a smile, it not only looks weird, <laughs> but um, but I won't be able to control the in the middle part of the lips. So think of it as a smile. You're pulling it back, uh, but you got a little bit of um, an opening here. We call it an aperture. That's where the air is coming out, right? Um, so tight sides and open middle. Um, easiest way to show that is in fact by showing you. So if I play a C sharp one. Notice, I can't talk and do this at the same time, but notice I have tight sides and a small opening in the middle. So you can see that opening, right? If I go an octave higher, tight sides, opening in the middle. The lower the notes tend to be a little bit wider of an, an aperture, and the higher the notes, the smaller, the more enclosed that wants to be. So, again, so again, tight sides and a slightly open middle. Um, the next thing to think about is when people tell you to blow across the fife across the fife, it actually doesn't really work. And it's not the right word choice. Um, 
it's understandable from a teacher's perspective why they would say that to blow across the fife, but in reality, from a student's perspective, it means and you're aimlessly trying to get a sound and it doesn't work. And it's because very little of that air is actually going into the fife because it's all going across. Reality is we want only a small portion of the air to go across the fife. The rest wants to go into it. Um, there's physics involved and I won't explain it all. Um, I won't bore you. But um, so let's talk about getting that sound, right? So we're going to use a hand. Again, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You got it attached to you, hopefully. So I prefer the left hand in this case because the next step of this is going to be um, playing with the fife and you need your right hand to support the fife. So just use your hand. And in particular, I'm gonna turn a little sideways here just so you can see a little bit more about what I'm doing, but you can feel free to just keep looking at the camera. Um, so, uh, the web, the video. <laughs> So um, I keep doing this with my list because what I want to do is I want to have, I want to be sitting straight up. I want the head to be straight, the neck to be pretty straight, and um, and I want the the middle finger to be right in front of me, about six to eight inches in front of me, give or take, about this far. Uh, so you can see why I'm sitting sideways, so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to blow straight across, as if I just said you're blowing across the five. But this is the easiest way to start. So blowing straight across. Um, think about your armature. All right, so I'm feeling the air right about here, right about the middle finger, these top three fingers here, okay? All right, again, this will not get you a very good sound, but this is a starting point. From here, blowing straight across, I'm now gonna go down to, without moving my head, without moving my hand, without moving my neck even, I'm gonna try to aim that air to be on the inside of my knuckles right here, okay? So I'm gonna point to where I'm aiming because you obviously can't see the wind direction. I can feel it, but you, can, you won't be able to see what I'm doing unless I point. So as I'm pointing, I want you to watch what I'm doing with my lower lip right here and the lower jaw, just very subtle movement, but it will change the angle of the air just slightly. So, again, line it up so that your hand's not too high, it's right out in front, head straight. Okay, I'm gonna blow up here first. And now down to my knuckles. So, practice that, and with me, go back and forth. So top, bottom, top, bottom, ready? Take a breath as you need to. We can go one step further. We can actually go down to our palm now. So we went up to here, we went to here, and now let's go down to our palm, okay? So I'm gonna start here. One, two, three, two, one. Ready? Big breath. a lot of air but practice that a couple times make sure your hands not slip and uh, starting to slip up notice I think my, my middle finger starting to go a little bit above my, my mouth so make sure it's not going anywhere um, big thing is you want to make sure that it's not moving because if you if it starts moving if your hand starts moving your head starts tilting down you're not actually gonna get the result of this exercise it's gonna be a waste of time so the big thing is to make sure everything is still and still to be able to get this angle of the air. You want the air to be going down to about here. This is the best embouchure for the fife. Well, I mean air direction for the fife. Right in here, between the inner knuckles and your palm, right here. So some notes might require a little bit to be out of that range, but the higher you go, the more you get to that across the fife sound, um, and which means more airier, and uh, less, less, um, a less bolder sound, right? That air is going to be too much. Uh, too much air is going to be esca escaping. Sorry. Um, and if you go down too low, um, that's going to be very hard to control notes at the top. So, down closer to your wrist, 
will be really good for that low D to get that to aim that air down to that low D that's really hard to get that fundamental note of the fight so right now I'm aiming that air hit my wrist all right so next step here was polka punch so we're gonna do fairly much the what well, we just did um, but with the five so I'm not in this video I'm not caring about the right hand posture just hold the five however you want um, to a balance point right you don't want it to be all the way out here you don't want it to be in the middle just hold the five if you want to do it correctly kudos to you if you don't it's okay for this video it's just a matter of holding the five so I am actually holding it correctly but <laughs> details all right so we're gonna play an open C sharp so everything is open so again not so worried about the posture part just everything's open but what I am worried about is your left hand here so notice where I am with the five it's just below the lip here okay if I aim for the middle finger get your your hand just right and get your head just right if I aim for those middle those top fingers right like we did in the beginning see what I mean terrible terrible why did they teach you to blow across the five why did they teach you to do that it's terrible all right you might be able to get a sound but chances are it'll be really awful <laughs> so from there what did we do we went down to the middle part of the knuckles right the inside of the knuckles right so let's try that so first start up here then aim your air down to here. Okay, ready? So. So that third one in was a little weaker and it's because I changed my air up here, but I've been playing a while and I was able to maintain that, that armature fairly well, but as you heard, it was still really not that good. Let's try it again, same thing. So top, knuckles, top, knuckles. Ready? One, two, ready, and. Okay, I should have told you I held it for two beats each. One, two, one, two, sorry about that. From there, let's go down to the palm, okay? Let's start at the knuckles and let's go down to the palm. So two counts each. One, two, ready, and. So you can hear when he goes down to the palm, it's just a little bit, a little bit bolder than it was here at the knuckles. So for the lower register that we're playing, that low C sharp that we're playing, down closer to your palm is a, is a slightly better sound. For the C-sharp 2, an octave higher, it wants to be a little bit closer to your knuckles, if you can. So, um, I won't demonstrate that now, but you'll get the idea. Practice that a few times. Don't just think it's once and done. You might have to practice going back and forth, both with the fife and without the fife. Start without the fife. Get used to that hand posture, right? The next thing that um, I want you to think about as you're playing, there will always be some air escaping the fife. There will always be some air escaping the five. So when you have your hand out here, the, it's not so much just for visualizer, but it's also, you should feel a little bit of air out here. And what you should notice is when you go down further on the hand, you should notice less and less air. If you're blowing it onto your fingertips, you'll feel a lot. And if you're going down to your knuckles, to your palm, you won't feel as much. Another point to consider before I, I end the video, when you're playing with the fife, the air won't be a steady, a steady stream to these points. You might feel some air at different parts because you got something in the way here. That's all. So hopefully this helps. Uh, practice going back and forth between those points in the hand, both without the fife and with the fife, and see how that helps. And I'll make another video that talks about some exercises that you can use from there. Good luck. Thanks.